um, Claire stated a while ago. And then another thing is they have to be effective even at low concentration because again, sa pharmacy, um, dapat lower dose jutaperme, um, higher dose means higher risk also of having toxicity. Okay? So maybe share si Hazel. They work by killing the bacteria or by making it hard for the bacteria to grow and multiply. Okay, that's that's correct, Hazel. Um, they can again kill, either kill the bacteria, we call it bactericidal, and they can also inhibit the growth or multiplication of bacteria. If that's the case, we call it bacteriostatic. And then yesterday, we started our discussion on beta-lactam antibiotics, specifically the penicillins. And we have learned that for them to be able to kill the bacteria, they target the cell wall. Uh, specifically the synthesis of peptidoglycan because if they inhibit the cell wall synthesis there will be leakage of whatever substance um, is present inside the bacterial cell and that results to the death of the bacteria so do not forget class that those antibacterial that targets the synthesis of the cell wall of the bacteria is always bactericidal meaning um they will really kill the bacteria. And that's the, that is true for all beta-lactam antibiotics. Specifically, we have the penicillins. And then yesterday, we also discussed two classifications. We have the natural penicillins. Just a sort of review. Natural so, penicillin. Ah, my question does is Sarah, ma'am. And Pendi. Yes, Sarah. Ay, di ba, ma'am, itong regarding kag kahapon, ma'am, katong bacteriostatic na mga drugs and itong may itong mga side lang, good ma'am, which is to kill sa mga bacteria. Yes. Then itong bacteriostatic is para i-weaken lang good sila, ma'am, or um, ang ano. growth. Yes po. Uh -huh. Why not, ma'am, na itong mga side na drugs na lang ang gamito na para diretsyo na makil ang mga bacteria, ma'am? Okay, sige. Actually, that's a good question. Um, wow. <laughs> a round of applause. <laughs> so, okay. Um, anyway, sige, I'll answer that. Ha? Uh, remember, class, that our antibacterial agents have their own spectrum of activity. Example, uh, our drugs that target the cell wall synthesis may not be effective for mycoplasma. So, ngano dili siya effective for mycoplasma because mycoplasma does not have um, cell wall. So, dili gid siya effective dito. Therefore, we will be looking for other mechanism of action wherein we can either kill the bacteria or at least prevent their growth. So, mo na siya ang reason. Um, wala tay bisag isa lang na antibiotic na effective for all bacteria na nagakos ug sakit. So mao na siya nga continuous ang mga research in the discovery of new antibiotics because again um wala a single agent that can kill all bacteria even if they are bactericidal even if they can really kill the bacteria but there are cases na um the bacteria is resistant so, na ay mga reasons why they become resistant. So, katong ako ang example gaina, they may not have the cell wall or they may produce um, enzymes like beta-lactamases that can destroy the structure of the drug. So, if that's the case, kailangan jud ug other mechanism of action. Thus, we have the bacteriostatic drugs. Okay. So since we cannot target their cell wall, then we will target the, their protein synthesis. So daghan pud kaayo ta og drugs class na protein synthesis inhibitors. And then actually they are also um, widely used nowadays. So kung unsa ang bili kaya sa atong mga sidal, then we have the static. And let's give our immune system a chance to take its action. Okay? So, did I answer your question, Sarah? 
And a round of applause, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, ma anything Thank else that you want to clarify? <laughs> Katawa na nun sila. Katawa ninyo. That's actually a good question. Actually, it's good that you are curious kung kabalumanta na these drugs are bactericidal, so why use other agents that only prevent the growth of the bacteria? So that's a good question. So I, pero I hope I answered your question. And nasabdan to siya, nagkasinabot ta. Okay, so wala na. So let's move on to the third classification of our penicillins. We have the amino penicillins. So they have a spectrum of action similar to that of the PENG or the penicillin G, that's our natural penicillin. When you say antibacterial spectrum, it is referring to the list of the bacteria that can be killed by the drug. So PENG class, do not forget, um, it is effective for mostly gram-positive bacteria. Remember, they, they target the peptidoglycan. And our gram-positive bacteria, yung maraming, peptidoglycan. But um, one thing that is different uh, from the PENG is mas effective ang amino penicillins against gram-negative na mga bacilli. So this is their advantage over the natural penicillin. So we have the first drug under this classification. We have the ampicillin. These are the brand names available in the market. And what you have to remember about ampicillin is it's an amino penicillin that is most likely given parenterally. Okay? So why is it given parenterally? It has poor gastrointestinal absorption. And since this is another classification class, um, unlike the anti-staphylococcal penicillins, this is not resistant to penicillinase or the beta-lactamase. Thus, you don't give ampicillin to bacteria that is capable of producing penicillinase like the um, staphylococcus aureus and also other gram-negative bacteria. So aside from that, uh, what are the specific conditions where we can uh, use ampicillin as the treatment. So we can, again, use this for UTI, urinary tract infection, either caused by E. coli or Proteus mirabilis. So to, uh, do not forget, class, these two, uh, these two bacteria, E. coli and P. mirabilis, are gram-negative bacteria, but uh, they are susceptible to ampicillin. So ampicillin can kill these two. Uh, these two are also common causes of UTI. So E. coli again is mostly the cause of infection if you are unhygienic. So as girls are very at risk of having UTI, thus um, we really have to observe proper hygiene. And um, actually UTI are very common to sexually active people. And one example of bacteria that causes UTI for sexually active na mga people are I is the Proteus mirabilis. So ang ato ang ampicillin is still effective for that. And another thing, our ampicillin is our drug of choice for Haemophilus influenzae infection. So that's bacterial flu class. Um, our drug of choice is ampicillin. And this, aside from that, ampicillin is combined with probenicid and these two will be our drug of choice for gonorrhea caused by Neisseria gonorrhea. So probenicid class is actually an anti-gout. Let me write on the screen. This one is anti-gout. <clears throat> but so, ngano gina hatag shaf as drug of choice for gonorrhea in combination with ampicillin? Um, the reason here is probenicid will inhibit the elimination of ampicillin in the body, thus prolonging the duration of action of ampicillin. So, it will stay in the urinary tract, and that will actually help a person with 
gonorrhea, especially if um, the gonorrhea causes urethritis or the inflammation of the urethra. So if the ampicillin stays on that part of the body for a longer period of time, then it will have um, it will increase its efficacy. So that's the reason why this probenicid is combined with ampicillin. So this type of drug interaction is called potentiation. Wait, let me connect my graphic tablet first. I need to write on the screen. Nagahang ako ang laptop if permina ko siya gina connect adi. So again, this is actually an example of potentiation na drug interaction. Potentiation. Okay? Because this is 1 plus 0 equals 2. Uh, ampicillin is 1 because it's really an antibacterial agent. And 0 ito because probenicid actually has no antibacterial activity. Anti-gout talaga siya class. So 1 plus 0. But the effect of combining these two is more than the expected na effect. So potentiation ang tawagan na. Okay? So again, most likely we administer ampicillin as parenteral, parenteral na drug, mostly IM or IV. But if ever na ihatag jud nato siya orally class, the dose should be repeated every six hours. Okay, because um, rapid ang excretion ni ampicillin via the kidneys. It can even be eliminated na unchanged kahit hindi pa siya na metabolize ma excrete na siya agad-agad so every 6 hours ang dosage regimen for oral ampicillin okay do not forget that question so far you want to clarify something about ampicillin or even the amino penicillin as a whole wala so again, um, let me remind you that these antibacterial agents are prone to resistance. Thus, as pharmacists, alam nyo na yan, uh, we have a ano, campaign for antimicrobial resistance. And that's even the study of one of the group here sa research. So as pharmacists, dili dapat na magdugang class sa reason why we have... Um, Resistance, grabe, rampant na resistance for our antibacterial. So there are um, bacteria being isolated and once tested, they are resistant to almost every antibacterial available in the market. So ano, um, we really have to do our part as pharmacists, you know that. Um, if you become registered pharmacist someday, Please observe proper dispensing, rational use of our antibiotics. We don't want our E. coli to be resistant. Even our Proteus mirabilis, our Haemophilus influenzae, the Neisseria gonorrhea, we don't want those bacteria to become uh, resistant to ampicillin and even to other antibacterial agents. Okay? So that's just a little reminder. Um, practice proper accountability and be responsible class as pharmacist. Or even if karon you are a student, we can you can actually participate sa ato ang campaign against antimicrobial na resistance. Um, sharing information is one you can do that class sa inyong mga ano sa inyo ha mga kakilala and kamo mismo do not uh, do kanang mga practices nato as Filipino na, na nakakontribute sa pagmutate sa ato ang mga bacteria especially kaning mga penicillin this is um, the most common drug na widely abused gina dok dok <laughs> diba gina pulverize ni nila and then they put it directly um, to the wound so that's one thing that causes antimicrobial resistance. So if the drug is 
dapat binahatag orally you have to administer administer it orally it's a wrong it's a wrong practice to do that na idukdukon ang ang penicillin tapos ibutang sa samad okay so aside from ampicillin we are, we have actually pro drugs available in the market we have bacampicillin, cyclosiline, and hetacillin. These are all prodrugs of ampicillin inside the body. They will be metabolized to ampicillin. So just like bacampicillin class, um, pro, since prodrug siya, it has really no antibacterial property. But once hydrolyzed in the body, it will become ampicillin. So the ampicillin will take its action as antibacterial agent. And then the next the next member of the amino penicillin is the amoxicillin. This is the most widely abused antibiotic. So abused ha kasi bisag unsa na lang. So basig ka mo na may experience about ano, the wrong use of am amoxicillin. Pwede ninyo na siya i-share. Makatry na mo, maka-encounter o person na bisag unsa na lang ang gamit sa amoxicillin. Anyone? Or ako lang din hi ang naka-experience na may nagamit o amoxicillin na pinakuyaw ka na makulapan ka. Since ito. <laughs> ah, okay. Janika, nakatry ka? Or are you you know someone na ginabutang directly sa samad? That's a wrong practice ha. Do not do that again. So di ba... <laughs> Nay, nagasulti. Nay, gusto mag-share. Kaya lang murag robot. Murag siya robot. Okay. So again. Okay. Um, Kung unta ko again. Ako'y... Nadungan ko. Kinsa ito? Tin? Yes, Tin. Nandun sa man. Ajay? Kinsa ba? O ako kasabot kinsa yung nag-a-istorya. Kung robot ko ba? Class, you can send your... Uh, you want if you want to share something, you can send it sa chat. Kain para magkasinabot ha. Okay. Sige. Again, do not do that ha. Nang dukdukon ang penicillin or ang amoxicillin tas ibutang sa samad. Remember, according to the World Health Organization, if there is a mon monstrous na sakit na mag-evolve sa kalibutan, ingon nila, it will start in the in the Philippines. Why? Kasi pataka lang tag-inom o antibiotics din. He. Oh, so, pareha sa gingon ni Russell, gihimog vitamins ang amoxicillin. Karoon pa ko kadungog na si amoxicillin is a kind of vitamin. So, again, amoxicillin class is an antibiotic. Ha? Huh? Dili yun na siya vitamins. Manara ba mo og vitamins sa kay Ma'am Cherry? So, you know what are our available vitamins in? the market. So, kung bata pa ta, nakakontribute ta sa, uh, sa antimicrobial resistance dyan, ikakagibudbud ninyo sa samad. Pati tetracycline. Okay, tetracycline is another antibiotic. Um, you can really use amoxicillin to, uh, against cough ha, sa, sa infection if na kay cough. Pero you have to have proper diagnosis from the doctor na your cough is really caused by a bacteria. Because ang cough class, ang ubo, daghan na siya ang cause. Pwede siya viral infection. So, bisag kung sa panin yung laklak o antibacterial agent, tiligid na mo epekto. Or there are also coughs caused by allergy. So again, nainom kag antibiotic pero allergy ang cause sa imuhang cough nakadungag ka ato sa antimicrobial resistance. Gamit nila pang first aid sa nadisgrasya. Huh? As in? In combination with methanomic acid. Methanomic acid is an analgesic. So if you have pain, if you are like you experience headache, backache, toothache, you can use methanomic acid. But if merong ano, merong bacterial infection, then that's the time we can use amoxicillin. But class, the reality is in the Philippines, amoxicillin is no longer effective. So, bisan pag mupalit mo sa, sa tindahan o amoxicillin class, most of our, most of the Filipinos are already resistant to amoxicillin. Uh, kasi, 
bisag-unsa na lang. Ako personally, I encountered a person na nag-allergy siya, nagkan siya rashes sa, sa lawas and parehas to sa mong giingon dyan, motorcycle accident na imuha ang sa ako, ah, nag-allergy siya, yahang giinom kay mephenamic acid o amoxicillin. So, wala na to ginasisi na ang mga tao ha. Kasi they are not really informed. Pero that's our part as pharmacists. We really need to give information. We really have to educate the community on the proper use of our drugs. Okay? Kinasama daw para dili ma-infect. So, ang pangutan na effective pa ba ang amoxicillin sa ato? Ah, to some other countries class, amoxicillin is very effective but not in the Philippines. So, Um, most of the bacteria present in the Philippines class are already mutant. So since nag-mutate na sila, oops, likely dili na sila effective. Yes, Majeda, prescription drug ang celicoxib. Ah, okay. Celicoxib is an NSAID, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Okay, that's the use. Uh, that's the classification of our ends uh, of our celicoxib. It can be used as anti-inflam. It can even be used for analgesia, and pwede po siya to some extent antipyretic. But if it is not tolerated by the patient, we have to discontinue using that drug. Okay, pag naka-experience siya ng adverse effect and dili niya matolerate ang adverse effect, then you have to change the drug, you have to go back to the doctor and have it changed. Ma'am, so okay, magood ang family namin ng ano, silicoxib kasi yung pisan ko din po na isa nagpabunot po siya. Tapos, ang i-prescribe ka agad sa kaya ng, ay, ng dentist niya kay yung silicoxib. Strong strong daw po na ano, na ano yan? na pain reliever ang ibigay niya sa pinsan ko, ma'am. Tapos pagkalaman nila na selectoxib, mong ipalitan nila ka anak. <laughs> Kasi natakot sila dun sa incident, ma'am, na ano, yung hindi po makahinga yung tito ko. Ah, okay. Sige. Um, that's actually, actually, kana nga, ano, what do you call that? Like, costume tradition. Ano sa ba? Um, atong karakteristik sa Filipino, it is actually good. Good sa Filipino na we really care as much as possible. Gusto na to dili masakita ng ang, ang tao. So, as medical practitioner, gusto na to dili, na, dili siya makafeel of pain. Pero that good karakteristik is actually nahimo siyang bad to some extent. Kasi sa sa ato ang gusto na dili siya makafeel of pain kana bitong mo gamit ta og kanang strong strong kung na pa strong guest mao na gid ang ato ang ginagamit diretso for our patient actually the practice sa uh, America is they have to i they, they ask the patient na irate ang pain kasi pain is subjective um there are pain nga like sa ako ah I have high threshold for pain. Dili ko dayon masakitan, even masamad ko or kung saan man akong gibati. Um, lahi ang level sa ako ang pain. So, dili na siya pareha sa inyo. Ha? There are some of you na nababa ang threshold sa pain. So, gamay na sakit mo. Ping it, yun na sa kasakit. So, sa America, the practice is they have to rate the pain first from 1 to 10 kung unsa ka grabe ang ilahang gibati. Um, after that, if ma-rate na siya sa patient, if kaya pa, actually they don't give anti-inflam or analgesic class. Um, kasi pain will just subside, especially if dili man siya yung ato kasakit. Um, they will just give anti uh, analgesic if grabe na yun, dili na siya matolerate. Dili sa Pilipinas, gamay nga sakit. Kato na pa yung taas na dose, kato na pa yung strong na ito na mga analgesic. So, muna na ito ang problema with our practice here in the country. Okay? Parehas po sa ito ang 
uh, mga antibiotic. Naman unta tay mga first generation na mga antibiotic. Pero ang problem is, dito yun ta sa mga newer generation na uh, very strong na mga antibiotics na to. And then, when those drugs become resistant, asa na lang tapuluton ani? Mo na ang ato ang always e remember ha huh? okay so do not forget na actually the methanamic acid is na, na 500 mg is a prescription drug sa ato ang mga analgesic class mga NSAIDs na to the higher dose are prescription drugs and then the lower doses are um over the counter so karon sakitan kag ngipon mo diretso na sa 500 mg Uh, without knowing that the 500 milligrams is actually a prescription drug. So, maulang na siya ang lisod kaayo ibag-uhon nga practice in the Philippines. Kaya maawayan yung kao pasyente. Huwag din mo siya tagaan ng methanamic acid. So, uh, I hope sa sunod, um, matarong ato ang practice dere sa paggamit sa drugs. And kailangan yun na siya Um, sugdan sa ato ang generation. Kasi katong mga um, generation nga nauna sa ato, ah, wala na tay mahimo sa ilaha if they don't practice rational, uh, rational use of drug. Okay? So, ang amoxicillin class, um, this is a, the counterpart of ampicillin, but amoxicillin is the one that can be taken orally because it has proper or it has better gastrointestinal absorption. So, pwede siya inumun orally. You know that very well. But just like ampicillin, it is also not resistant sa penicillinases. Resistant siya sa acid. Bisan pag itake mo siya orally, it will pass through the stomach. The drug will not be destroyed. But it's not resistant to penicillinases. Thus, amoxicillin should not be given to bacterial infection na ang, cost, ang, ang causative agent is able to produce this enzyme. So, example, staph aureus. So, si staph aureus is uh, able to produce beta-lactamases or penicillinases. Example, na kay boil or, or para common na lang pimples kasi Pimples is caused by stuff or use. So, kung nakay pimples, you don't actually use amoxicillin for that. Kay resistance stuff or use sa um, amoxicillin. Baka na lang ang problema kasi like if they buy 250 milligrams na NSAID, so niya, duha o nila o gino, mula, dili na natuto siya hawak. Pero ang 250 lang yun plus ang OTC. But anyway, di pa man sila malasom na. Di pa sila magkaroon ng toxicity with the 500 milligrams. Unless na lang ugdaghanon ka yun nila inong. So mototong ako ang kwento na akong kakilala na naglaklak siya o 20 kabuok na biogesic tapos 8 kabuok na alaksan. So gisabay-sabay na niya o inom. Tapos after niya nag-iinom, sakit iya hangkian, nagpadala siya sa hospital. So, hindi na ako makita ang rasyonaling. Ano pa na inom ang tambalingan na kadaghan tapos magpadala ka sa hospital. Kasi iyahang, ang iyahang purpose nga nung nag-inom siya ato kay magpakamatay siya. So, di lang din ako na siya makalimutan. Kasi yun na ako makuha. I mean, I mean, di na ako siya gusto mamatay. Pero, di ako makuha ang ang rationally behind sa nag-inom kag tambal nga daghan niya pagka human mo padala ka sa hospital. <laughs> Wala lang, nalagot lang po ato. Okay. Any question? Wala? Nagkasinabot ta sa ato ang amino penicillin. Uh, let's move on to the last classification of our penicillins. They are our anti-pseudomonal penicillin or the extended spectrum, pen spectrum penicillin. Wait, I'll just... Plug my laptop. Mag, malubat na siya. Okay. Again, we have anti-pseudomonal penicillin or the extended spectrum. So, yung pseudomonas class, pseudomonas species are ano, negative, gram-negative bacteria and uh, most of the time, these pseudomonas species are 
resistant sa mga na-discuss na nato na penicillin. So we have newer generation penicillins that have expect, uh, extended spectrum that they can be even given to infections caused by Pseudomonas. We have a lot of Pseudomonas species. The most common is the Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which is a common um, cause of secondary or nosocomial infection. So you know the meaning of nosocomial infection, right? Kana mga infection nga makuha nato sa hospital. So example, sa burn patients, di ba ang atong mga burn patients, pero wala tay burn unit diri sa Jensen has a Davao na ay burn unit. So sa atong mga burn patients um, especially if third degree burn wala na siya ginatabunan ang ilahang samad. So open lang na siya to facilitate um faster healing. And since open lang ang ilahang wound, then it is prone to infection. And then most of the time, uh, ang cause sa uh, secondary infection sa burn patients na to kay Shudumonas. So these are our penicillin that can be used for that condition. We have two groups of drugs that are under the anti-sodomonal penicillin. The first group of drug is the carbox carboxypenicillins. Uh, specifically, we have two examples here. We have carbenicillin and picarcillin. <laughs> Wait lang, tubagun sa nako si Jai. Ang samad ma'am, unsay appropriate, tabunan or dili. Actually, what I did with my brother is, nagkaroon mo siyang infection last time. If mugawas siya sa among balay, bisagasa siya muabot, ginapatabunan na ko ang iyahang samad. That is to prevent infection. Pero pag naalang siya sa balay and then limited ang movement, um, I actually removed the gauze, the bandage, um, para mag mauga, mauga iyahang samad, pas-pas, and madali o pag-ayo. Kasi pag permi po ni mo siya tabunan, magbasa mang good always ang samad, and that will slow down the healing process. Okay? I hope I answered your question. Anything else? Okay, sige. Yung sugat ng mga diabetic. Okay. Um... The problem with diabetic people is they have slower healing process. Um, there will be instances na if dili pa yung ato kataas ang ilahang blood sugar, maayo pa ilahang samad. But if they really have um, high blood sugar, uncontrolled level of blood sugar, tapos magkaroon sila o wound, that will be a very big problem because the healing process is very slow and sa iyahang ka slow class um magkaroon na siya og kanaganing secondary infection may infect na noon ang iyahang sa mad ug mudako so mo na atong problem so possibly nagaheal na siya ha nagaheal na siya pero the process is very very slow na sa iyahang ka slow magkaroon na hinoon o secondary infection. And the secondary infection will lead to kanang mudako na ang samad and masamot na siya o bili maayo, um, leading to most of the time amputation. Like example, sa tiil, putlo na lang. Ilahang tiil kasi mag ano na siya, necrosis. Kaya wala na gid siya na ayo, kaya na, na, na infect na. Um, namatay na ang tissues ka na mag-itom na. Pag mag-itom na na siya, i-amputate na. Okay? Anything else? Wala na. So again, the first group of drugs under the anti-pseudomonal penicillins are the, uh, is the carboxypenicillins. We have examples like carbenicillin and picarcillin. Every unsang at time, mag-disinfect o samad. Actually, sa ako ang brother, nag-disinfect jud ni adlaw-adlaw. Okay? Para dili mas, mas magkaroon o secondary infection ang iyahang wound. So, 
ginapahugasan yun ako sa iya ha. Um, especially in the evening before siya matulog. Kasi sa morning, sige man siya glakaw-lakaw. So, abog, daghan o pwede mag-pause o secondary infection. Pero pag naamoy samad, ha? sa bang klaseng samad na siya? Kay most of us, kung masamad na mara ginagmay, raman na nga to ang samad, no? Uh, actually, I'm not really familiar with the diabetic patients. If kapila sila sa isa kaadlaw mag-dress sa ilahang wound. I'm not familiar with the diabetic I have not tried caring for a diabetic person. Actually, my father was diabetic before he died. But um, wala to siya naka-experience na masamad and ana, magkaroon us, ng slowdown niya, healing process sa samad. So wala ko katry maghugas anya. Nilipod man good na siya advisable na from time to time, like every hour, magsige kag panghugas ay mga samad. Na sige man doon siya kabasa. And moist, remember, is prone to contamination, prone to infection. So, dili po siya advisable na every hour magsige ka o basa. Kasi sa water po class, na imuhang gigamit, pwede po dito na ay bacteria na mag-cause o infection. So, mo sa ako ang manghod sa buntag, yes, mag- Kaya e maligo man siya and then sa gabi before siya matulog. Uh, zone rocks. <laughs> um, we, we actually call that baking solution. Baking solution or the modified baking solution um, wherein we, we mix or we dilute the sodium hypochlorite with a lot of water. Pero daghan na siya hanga, mahulog na siya o like 2.5% na lang or lower than that if it's modified baking solution. Um, kasi sodium hypochlorite is a very corrosive drug. Uh, I mean chemical. So it is also not advisable if you use that as antiseptic. It's a good disinfectant but it's not an advisable na antiseptic na always ni mo siya gamitin. Okay? Pwede, pwede dyan ka. Ihalo sa tubig. Pero kailangan diluted kayo siya ha para mahimo siyang antiseptic. Okay? So let's talk about the members of our carboxypenicillin. We have the carbenicillin disodium. It has a broader range of antimicrobial activity compared to other penicillins that we have discussed. So this is not stable in acid. Plus, always remember if the drug is not stable sa acid, automatic you don't give it orally. So, carbenicillin is given parenterally. And also, it's not resistant to penicillinase. So, if the, if the bacteria is able to produce penicillinase, you don't give carbenicillin. Okay? Though, since this is anti-pseudomonal um, na na penicillin, you can give it to other infections caused by gram-negative bacteria just like the Pseudomonas species. Okay? Next, we have carbenicillin in the nail sodium. This is class um, produced para si carbenicillin can be given orally. So the presence of the in the nail sodium there will make carbenicillin active orally. So, dili na siya basta-basta ma-destroy in the presence of acid. Okay? So, this one is given for carbenicillin-sensitive systemic and urinary tract infections caused by the following bacteria. So, the mona species, the indole positive proteus species like the proteus mirabilis, so the ganman na silang classing proteus, and other selected gram-negative bacilli. But again, the difference, if carbenicillin disodium lang, um, it should be given parenterally. But if it is carbenicillin in the nail sodium, that's the time we can give this orally. Okay? Next, we have the ticarcillin. 
uh, just like the carbenicillin, this is also unstable. Sa acid, thus, ticarcillin is only given parenterally. You cannot see ticarcillin plus na um, for oral administration. Um, therefore, most of the time, may encounter natin siya sa hospital. So, dilita ng community pharmacy na ay ticarcillin. To some extent na, ah, um, pero mas common siya sa hospital na setting. Kasi sa community, wamantan always nag uh, ano ka ng mga parenterally given na drugs. No? Sa hospital, kay pag nakaparenteral ang patient na ito, eh, ginahatag na siya, ticarcillin. Okay? Questions? Wala? So let's continue. We have the uridopenicillins. This, this is the second group of drugs under the um, anti-pseudomonal penicillin. So we have the PAM, tatlo na sila kabuok, the piperacillin, which is the most potent among the three, azlocillin, and the mezlocillin. So we, we start with the mezlocillin. This is recommended for serious infections. Class, pag serious na ang infections, that's the time we use mezlocillin. We don't give mezlocillin kung ang imuhang infection, dili man ing ato ka, serious. So we reserve this drug for the, those serious infections. ha. Kasi pag dili serious ang imuhang infection, tas ni, at, ni diritso na ka sa mezlocillin, um, the patient will be at risk of resistance. And if the bacteria develops resistance from mesloselin, then what will happen next to the patient? So malisod ta o pangita o another antibacterial agent that, that is capable of killing the mutated na bacteria. So on sa na mga serious infections, we have the Klebsiella na mga infections, uh, Proteus erogenosa, the Haemophilus influenzae, and other anaerobic bacteria. So our ano class, our anti pseudomonal penicillins are actually unstable sa acid. So they are really get given parenterally, and since they are not anti staphylococcal, then unstable or resistant po sila sa penicillinases. And then we have the piperacillin, which is again the most potent among the three. And this is the most active against gram-negative bacteria. So always remember our penicillins are very active to, against gram-positive bacteria, but pili lang sa ilaha ang pwede sa gram-negative, in which the most active is this one, the piperacillin. So just like other anti pseudomonal penicillins. This is also destroyed by our stomach acid. Thus, we give this parenterally, either intravenously or intramuscularly. Okay? Questions before tayo mag-continue with our beta-lactamase inhibitors? Wala? Basig, naamoy something na you are curious about din ha? Uh, let's try to answer that. Pag di rin ako kaya answeran. Assignment. Wala. So continue ta. Let's have the beta-lactamase inhibitors. Again, beta-lactamase inhibitors, they're actually suicide drugs. Mga suicide drugs na to ni sila or suicide substrate and they are uh, most likely combined with our penicillins. So the drug interaction between penicillins and this beta-lactamase inhibitors is ano, potentiation. They will potentiate the effect of our penicillins by inhibiting the beta-lactamase. So beta-lactamase is the, diba, the enzyme that is produced by our bacteria um, para ano siya, maging resistant siya against penicillin, this, this enzyme can open the beta-lactam ring leading to the inactivation of our drug. So, inhibit siya. So, paano siya naging suicide substrate? It is actually structurally related to the beta-lactam ring of penicillin. 
So instead na the beta lactamase will destroy the beta lactam ring of the penicillin uh, since related ang structure ani nila, then siya na ang mag suicide. But ingon ko potentiation kasi they don't really have significant na antibacterial activity. So it's always 1 plus 0 equals 2. 1 plus 0 kasi 1 is an antibacterial, penicillin is an antibacterial, and 0 kasi uh, they don't really have significant antibacterial activity. So sa name pa lang daan, class, you should know their mechanisms, me mechanism of action. Uh, they bind to the beta lactamases and inactivate them. Or simply, you can just write, they inhibit the beta-lactamases or beta-lactamase enzymes. So what are those drugs na considered beta-lactamase inhibitors? The first one is the clavulanic acid. Um, actually, clavulanic acid can be considered an antibiotic, but it has a very weak antibacterial activity. So why does we call it why do we call it um, clavula, ay, antibiotic? Kasi it's produced by a microorganism. It's produced by Streptomyces clavoligeris. Pero again, insignificant yahang antibacterial activity. So asa na to ginakombine si clavulanic acid? So we, com we combine clavulanic acid with amoxicillin. Thus, we have in the market co-amoxiclav. Uh, always, I remember to download my slide ha, so that you will have a reference for this one kasi medyo mahaba. This is again 181 slides. 183 slides. Kailangan na ni siya isulod sa atong mga brain cells. Sige. So, co-amoxiclav class. Um, do you know the brands available in the market for co-amoxiclav. Kinsa na din he ang um, nakatake na og co-amoxiclav or na ay family member na nakatake na og co-amoxiclav. Sa inyo hang nabalaan ng mga brands. Let me just check. Augmentin, ma'am. Okay, very good. Majeda, Augmentin. Ito lang. Augmentin po itong sa mga amok. Oh, augmentin sa dang inyong um, nabalaan. So, let's compare. What have you observed uh, sa difference between amoxicillin? I believe you know amoxicillin very well. What have you observed between ano, amoxicillin and po amoxiclab? Club, what's their difference plus? I mean, example, sa price. Nagpalit ng Jinuana. Let's say, mas mahal. Mas mahal si Kuamoxiclab. Actually, it's way, way more expensive compared to Amoxiclab. Kasi this one is already um, a combination drug. Augmentin lang inyong hang nabalan. We have the Bactive. You can actually co amoxiclam in the market. So do not forget last co means combination of amoxy is amoxicillin and clav is clavulanic acid. The, the drug interaction is potentiation. It's 1 plus 0 equals 2. The presence of clavulanic acid will potentiate the effect of amoxicillin. Making amoxicillin um, resistant to beta lactamases or penicillinases. Okay, parehas lang ng beta lactamase o penicillinase ha. So, ang amoxicillin class, it is stable sa acid but it is not resistant to penicillinases or beta lactamase. Thus, we combine clavulanic acid. So, uh, where can, what kind of condition na pwedeng i-apply si po amoxiclav? We have, pwede siya any condition, skin, respiratory, ear. You can even give po amoxiclav for UTI caused by the following 
bacteria na nagaproduce o beta lactamase. So you know, you know it very well na staph or use produces beta lactamase. Aside from staph or use E. coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Enterobacter species, Marachella catarhalis and Haemophilus ducreyi are all gram negative bacteria that is capable of producing the beta lactamase enzyme. Pwede na ihatag si coamoxiclav. Okay? Next, we have the ticarcillin plus clavulanic K or clavulanic acid. Kaya nagihimo lang ni siya salt. That is why clavulanic potassium. So in the market, we have thymentine as the brand. Again, this is a penicillin, anti-pseudomonal penicillin. And this is a beta-lactamase inhibitor. So the same reason of combination with that of the co-amoxiclub. So our thymentine or our ticarcillin plus clavulanate is given for septicemia. It's bacterial infection sa blood. Um, pwede din siyang ibigay for lower respiratory tract infection. That's LRTI. And pwede din ibigay for UTI na caused by those mentioned na beta-lactamase uh, producing bacteria. Kanang dalon lang ang bote, ha? <laughs> Unsa daw? <laughs> Ang rodion kay nagadispense og po amoxiclav bisag walay prescription kanang dalon lang ang bote. So nganong ginahimo man na nila? <laughs> Lagi mo na ko ano ma'am, pinsan na ko ma'am. Kapila na daw siya nakapalit ng dalon lang daw niyang bote tapos na ako nga diri man ako pwede. Ma'am murag coke. Nagpalit oh. pag litro. Kita lang daw ang bote as a proof, ma'am. Na nagainom siya o go amok. Oo. As in? <laughs> so good. Actually, class, a prescription. Um, If the patient is not capable of uh, purchasing all the required bottles, kasi i-check man na, uh, mama na siya ang role sa inyong farm call. I-check man na sa signa sa doktor, sa instruction sa doktor kung uh, unsa kadaghan ang need sa patient. And then tanawon kung unsa ang available na na drug sa pharmacy. And then i-check sa pharmacist kung pila ka bottles ang needed sa patient. So if the patient is not again capable of purchasing all the bottles, example, tulo ka bottles ang iyahang kailangan para mahuman niya iyahang therapy. Niya, isa lang iyahang kaya, pwede man na siya. Plus, as long as the pharmacist will um, make a note in the prescription na like mag-minus, like minus one, kay one lang iyahang gipalit. So the next time, uh, if ubus na sa patient ang one bottle, pwede siya magbalik sa pharmacy, pero dalo niya to iyahang prescription. And if isa lang gihapon ang iyahang kaya palitun, mag-minus one na po ang, ang pharmacist ana. Well, nag-minus, you have to indicate the date kung kanus at niyagi purchase. Kasi dili man lifetime ang prescription plus. Dili man na siya lifetime na. Bisag nag-minus-minus na ang pharmacist, naubos na tanan, wala. Sige lang gihapon gamit. Actually, example, tulong ka battles ang iyahang kailangan. After the third bottle is purchased, then uh, actually the, the pharmacist should keep the prescription na. Bawadyo dapat na siya ang himuon. Wala na siya sa practice. Ang bote lang ang dalaon. Sa mukha eh. Hindi mo din nag-cope. Ako ma'am, tapos na pa siya daw dito ang pharmacist ma'am. As in? Yes ma'am. Ayaw ka. So, so, okay hindi yung pharmacist. Pharmacist yun siya, kasi gili. Yes, there... ma'am. Pharmacist yun siya, ma'am. Student din mo, ma'am. Dati. <laughs> Patay ka din ha. As in? Yes, ma'am. I-chat sa ako ang name, Anabe. <laughs> Ayaw lang i-chat din ha, para dili sila kaila. Ako lang. Ako lang ang i-chat. Dili man sila kaila, ma'am. As in? <laughs> 
<laughs> sa muka ko si on. Kamo ha pag mag pharmacist na mo pohon. Um, dili ko gusto na makadungog na naapod mo iing ana nga practice. Kay tama si Majeda. Unsa na kok? Pa palit ka sa sa pharmacy magdala kag bote kay para exchange ana ganun. <laughs> Class um never sa ato ang practice sa pharmacy na nahimong substitute sa prescription ang bote sa tambal. Okay? <laughs> And actually you don't you don't actually know the condition of the patient. Basig magsige na na siya palit o po amoxiclav. For example, nag-UTI. Tapos recurrent na iyang ang UTI. Balik-balik. So palit siya po amoxiclav. Una-una na siya reseta. Ang sa mga sunod na mga uh, pagbalik sa iyang hang, um, UTI, nakaalala siya nga, maumanggit po akong tambal. So palit siya. Nagdala siya o bote. Actually, as pharmacist, we really don't know the condition of the patient. Uh, pwede to siya na himong recurrent kasi naging resistant na ang bacteria nga nag-cause sa iyahang UTI. So basig kailangan niya of another drug or kailangan niya of higher dose. So muna siya ang inyuhang tandaan. Nga di dapat ninyo himuon ang bote as substitute <laughs> sa, para sa, ano, sa prescription I mean. Nagbasa ko sa gitat niya. I like. <laughs> okay, kailagi na ko. Ako na tayong istudyante ko si Unbe. <laughs> sa muka. Kamu ha, you don't do that. Mantay rin yun mo. Yes, Jessa. Kinsa sa maning nag-question? Si Jessa, si Jonah, si Belly. Kinsa sa maning nang nadira? Ako, ma'am. Yes, kinsa sa man? Pag mag... Ay, di ba ma'am, kapag magsige o take o antibiotic kay... Nagka-resistant, di ba, ang patient sa ano sa antibiotic? So, kinanglan na nila higher antibiotic? Pwede. Pwede, class. If ang um, patient is murugdaghan na lang kay siya infection, bago lang siya nag-antibiotic, mag-antibiotic na sad siya, um, the bacteria may uh, may become resistant. Pwede magkaroon ng mutation. And that requires changing of the drug to a stronger antibiotic or it may require higher dose of the antibiotic para maging effective and hindi na mag-recurrent, uh, mag magbalik-balik ang iyahang infection. Labi na ang UTI. UTI is a recurrent na infection if not properly treated. Um, so far, wala pa ko nang kadungog o resistance sa beta-lactamase inhibitors. Kasi our beta-lactamase inhibitors will be recognized by the enzyme. I mean, they will really have interaction and it can really be a ano, anong substrate, suicide na substrate. Ang ato ang nag-resistant yun, atong mga antibacterial. Agent. Okay? So, again, ha? Kamo, pila mo ka book? 16 mo ka book? Kusing yun dito mo. Kusing yun dito mo. Ma'am, si Majeda dito, ma'am. <laughs> ma'am, ako ha, kay na-eye deposit. <laughs> Cook niya di ay na-eye deposit. Kay na-eye na deposit. Pag ano, pag walay buti nga dala na-eye deposit, ana. <laughs> Kaya naman di ba ang cook kay... Um, Mag-deposit lang ako ha, kay Dalabuti. So, ikaw, Majeda, musugot ka. Walay dalak ko as long as mag-deposit. So, mag na siyang gitawag. Ka. Oh, pharmacist class na kwarta-kwarta na gyudni. <laughs> kwarta-kwarta na gyudni. So, do not forget class na ang pharmacy na ay doha ka side. Business na side, doon ang clinical na side. So, do not forget pharmaceutical care. Pwede. Kinsa maning nangutan na. Um, pwede siya. Ma'am. Oo. Kinsa man to. <laughs> ako um, ma'am, kay Tom Silaitis na ko dati ma'am, ang ginahatag sa ako is ko amox on niya. Sige mo balik-balik akong Tom Silaitis o mga grade 2 pa lang ko ma'am. Kasi yun? 
Ko amax ang gi ano sa ako amam ah, niya. Taas kay tong milligram ata ma'am 625. Yeah. Ay, minsan ako kay istorya Isabel. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, okay, bagod ko sa tonsillitis, ma'am. Grade 2, grade 3, grade 4, grade 5. How about, no, how about nowadays? Okay, gaya mo ka? Wala na kayo ka ron, ma'am. Okay. Um, pag recurrent mo hang tonsillitis, you are actually a candidate for tonsillectomy. <laughs> okay, ipatanggal na lang na siya, class. Um, before pa magbaba na siya. Pwede mong na siya magbaba ang infection sa heart. So, mo na nga ginatanggal. And pag recurrent na, kung balik-balik lang imuhang tambal, gabalik-balik, gihapon ng imuhang sakit, most likely, nakadevelop ka og resistance over that drug. That's the reality. Okay, ano naman ko for tonsillectomy, ma'am, pero wala man ko ginda yun, ma'am. Ah, okay. Kung wala na ka ron, that, that's okay. Umayang pero maunsa, ma'am, ma'am, kung tanggalon ang tonsils. Maunsa. <laughs> Actually, wala man kayo siya drastic na effect on the body. Umayat lang ka for the time na nag-tanggal uh, imong tonsils and nag-heal pa imong wounds because you will not be allowed to take solid foods. Mamayat ka. And then there will be some changes in your voice. Pero wala man. Wala siya yung ato ka drastic na, ano, ha, na effect. Kasi ang ano is just an accessory organ. The tonsils are are considered accessory organ. So it may or may not be present in the body. Wala siya'y grabe nga effect. Unlike the major organs that we have. Okay? Anything else? Ina, ma'am. Okay. Next, we have another beta-lactamase inhibitor, the sulbac. And our sulbactam is combined with ampicillin. Pag i-combine na siya sa kay ampicillin, we call it sultamicillin. Our well-known na brand in the market is Unasin. So it's also a very common drug in the market, the Unasin. Um, Pirmi po ni siya gina-reseta. So itong nag-work work ko as a pharmacist, pirmi na ko siya ma encounter. So the same reason uh, with that of the coamoxiclav, the same reason why we combine ampicillin and sulbactam. But nevertheless, you still give this to bacterial infections caused by bacteria that is capable of producing beta-lactamase. So paulit ulit lang ni siya, Sorius, Klebsiella species, Proteus mirabilis, um, We have the Bacillus fragilis, the Enterobacter, and the Acinetobacter species. So, mga infections like skin infections, um, infections sa tissues, sa uh, intra-abdominal infections, and even gynecological infections. You can use the Unasin. Pero it's kind of more expensive than the single drug, syempre. Next, we also have the Tazobactam. So, another niya class na beta-lactamase inhibitor which is more potent compared to the other drugs we have mentioned earlier. Now, as a ginakombine si Tazobactam, it's combined with piperacillin. So, again, it's combined with piperacillin. It's piperacillin plus Tazobactam. So, we have brands in the market like Um, Zosin, Tazosin, we also have Piptaz in the market. So, sulat na ko. We also have Piptaz in the market. So, sa brand name pa lang class, you will really see it's a combination of Piperacillin and Tazobactam. So, the same thing, it is also given to infections caused by bacteria that is capable of producing beta lactamase. So, yun sa ito ng mga conditions, it, all, uh, it includes appendicitis, postpartum endometritis, uh, that's after giving birth, 
and then there will be inflammation of the endometrius, and then pelvic inflammation disease and other skin infections, and also for pneumonia, we can use the piperacillin. Remember, piperacillin is the most potent na anti-shudumonal drug na to, or penicillin, and beta-lactamase is also, I mean, tazobactam is also a more potent beta-lactamase inhibitor. So this is actually a reserved drug for serious infections. If you have um, infection na not really that serious, not severe, then don't use the uh, piperacillin plus tazobactam. Okay? Questions? Uh, we, we may not be able to touch cephalosporins today kasi daghan ka, na curious man ta sa daghan ta questions. So, masigtaman lang ta sa carbapenems or sa monobactams. So, ano class? Um, ang ato ang mga beta-lactam antibiotics, ang nabutang lang mga good sa um, list, di ba? Beta-lactam. Beta-lactam antibiotics. We have first the penicillin. And ang nakabutang dito, we have the cephalosporin. But let's reserve cephalosporin next, for next week. But actually, na pa siya third drug. The carba carbapenems. Carbapenems. And number four, we have the monobactam. So please include the two sa list of our beta-lactam antibiotics. So let's discuss our um, carbapenems absorbing pa. Ano lang yun na kay medyo daghan. So si carbapenems class, what's the difference between penicillin and carbapenems? So the difference is peni uh, with penicillin is that the sulfur atom sa thiazolidin ring has been externalized and replaced by a carbon atom. So remember our general structure for penicillin. We have diba, the Balayni Superman. This is the thiazolidin ring. And we have here um, garahe. Balayni Superman na, na ay garahe. Mauni siya ang for penicillin. But for monobactams, it's still balay, pero dili na ni Superman kasi uh, sulfur has been externalized and it is replaced by carbon already. But meron, kani, nagya po siya garahe because the garahe is the beta-lactam ring. So that's the only difference between carbapenems and the penicillin. So since it also contain the beta-lactam ring, they have the same mechanism of action with that of the penicillin, which is they inhibit the cell wall synthesis of the bacteria, specifically on the peptidoglycan cross-linking. Okay, the same mechanism of action. Now, what's the example of the drug under the carbapenems? We have the thianamycin, which is obtained from streptomyces cattleya. That's the name of the microorganism where we uh, get our thianamycin. So this one, unlike the penicillin, especially the natural penicillins that we have, the thianamycin actually has an outstanding broad spectrum na anti antibacterial property. Meaning, kung tanawa na to ang list sa bacteria na pwede niya i-kill, medyo taas ang ato ang list. So, our thianamycin are effective against most aerobic bacteria. Pwede din siya for our anaerobes na mga gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Yeah, so actually both aerobic and anaerobes and both gram-positive and gram-negative. So that's number one advantage of the thianamycin compared to penicillin. Number two advantage, this is also resistant to beta-lactamase. So you can also give thianamycin for those mentioned bacteria that is capable of producing the enzyme, the beta-lactamases. But 
This is susceptible to acid and alkaline hydrolysis. So, dili na to siya pwede ihatag orally. So, most likely, this is given parenterally kasi once na mag, uh, ano siya, na to siya sa stomach, it will be destroyed by the stomach acid. Okay? That's the thiena. Myzin. Another member of the carbapenems is we have the imipenem. So this is also commonly found in the hospital setting and this is actually an expensive drug. So it's an expensive drug. So acti the activity is also the same with the thianamycin. It retains the extraordinary spectrum of activity of the thianamycin. However, imipenem is metabolized in the body by the enzyme dihydropeptidase or the DHP1. It's an enzyme in our body that is capable of destroying the structure of imipenem. Thus, what they did is they combined imipenem with another drug. We call it the silastatin. Uh, brand name in the market is Primaxin. So silastatin is an inhibitor of the dihydropeptidase. So this is another suicide substrate. The same use with that of the clavulanic acid. It's just that clavulanic acid inhibits the beta-lactamase enzyme. This one, the silastatin, inhibits the dihydropeptidase enzyme that is capable of destroying imipenem. Okay? So I hope that is clear. Now, imipenem plus aminoglycoside, meaning um, isabay, con concomitant administration of imipenem and our aminoglycoside. Aminoglycoside class is another group of antibiotics. Um, we will be discussing them also. Example of our um, amino glycosides are the G-tanks. G-tanks ang mnemonics na um, ginagamit. Gentamicin, tobramicin, what's the A? Amikacin, N is neomycin, K is canamycin, and S is strepto. Mycin. So those are examples of amino glycoside. And if you combine them with the imipenem, they have synergistic action. So anong isingle out na to class? Ang ilahang action. Kasi imipenem is um, bactericidal. This is sidal. Bakit siya sidal? Kasi it targets the cell wall. Um, amino glycoside targets the Protein synthesis. What did I tell you? If the drug targets the protein synthesis, it's, it is supposedly bacteriostatic. But we have an exception here. It's the amino glycoside. Kasi um, for an unknown reason, take note, unknown reason, though amino glycosides inhibit protein synthesis, it's considered sidal. It can kill the bacterial cell. So please take note of this. Now, sidal plus sidal, it's not just an additive na drug interaction, but a synergistic action. It's one plus one equals three, meaning you will get more than the sum of this two. Okay? So nga nung single output na siya? Kasi actually... Sidal plus static equals antagonism. So as pharmacist, you should know also this drug interaction that you should not give concomitantly a bactericidal drug with a bacteriostatic drug because their action will be antagonism. Bonisem. So maglibog naman good ang bacteria ani. Unsa man jud, patayon ni mo or i-inhibit ni mo ang growth. I will have more of that when we discuss the statics. Okay? Questions class? Sa so, example aning static, erythromycin. Are you familiar with erythromycin? 
Kasi nakagamit na og erythromycin din he. Naka-administer na og erythromycin. Okay. So most of the time, we use erythromycin to tonsillitis. But you can use that for other conditions also. Um, erythromycin targets the protein synthesis of the bacteria. Thus, you don't give erythromycin tapos imuha siyang isabay with amoxicillin. Gusto d'yo ka maayo, no? Gusto d'yo ka maayo. Gusto niyo doble-doble yun yung antibiotic. Tapos ang imuhang gikombine, amoxicillin, tapos erythromycin. Amoxicillin is sidal. Erythromycin is static. Nagbayad-bayad lang ka. There will be antagonism. They will cancel out the effect of each other. Okay? Question so far? Hala. Bilis ako mangutan na. Okay. Um, I'll be introducing pa man this topic sa inyo. So, nakuha tong imipenem class. Next, we have the meropenem. This is another um, drug in the hospital setting na medyo expensive po siya class, no? Um, by the way, let me just add before we move on to meropenem. Imipenem, just like Um, Tayanamycin is susceptible to acid hydrolysis, thus we don't give this orally. It's the same thing with meropenem. If you encounter them in the hospital or to some extent sa ibang um, drugstore in the community, uh, this is in ano, parenteral, parenteral drug dosage form. <clears throat> so meropenem class is already a second generation carbapenem. Thus, this is a reserved drug. We only use meropenem if the patient has serious infection and the causative agent is already resistant to multiple drugs. So we call it multiple resistant na bacteria. If you... If you conduct a susceptibility test, uh, most likely, kato na mga bacteria are resistant to a lot of antibiotics. So, ano siya? Let's reserve meropenem sa mga serious infection. Dili kayo naghubag ang imong ngipon. Tapos, dili man siya serious infection. Nag-meropenem nag -meropenem na ka agad-agad. Okay? So, serious infections lang na siya, ha? So it has greater potency against gram negative and anaerobes but less active si meropenem to most of our gram positive bacteria compared to our imipenem. So meropenem class is most likely for gram negative bacteria. And one Advantage of meropenem over imipenem is it is not hydrolyzed by the DHP1. Remember, the DHP1 is the enzyme that is capable of destroying the structure of imipenem. So, si meropenem di siya magubaan ng enzyme. And at the same time, um, it will not also be destroyed by the beta lactamase. So, pwede siya gamiton even for bacteria na nagaproduce aning beta lactamase. So, it has a broad spectrum of action. But the disadvantage is um, this is not active orally. So, dili siya active class orally ang ato ang meropenem. So, that's it. Um, for our carbapenems, I'll be ending here. Uh, I'll be discussing cephalosporins next week, but you have to study because I might or might not give a quiz next week, Thursday, from the start of chapter 8 up to meropenem. Okay, questions about our discussion this afternoon. Napa ba ko estudyante natulog na <laughs> natulog na tingali mo ay napaday napaday ko estudyante ang wala pa kang nakatulog mom <laughs> ay magkatulog class because oh, you have a lot to study and i hope 
uh, nakuha na ako inyo hang attention kasi drugs maguda to ang ginaistoryahan din hin, no? So, money siya ang kanang with the pharmacology, the heart and soul of pharmacy. So, it's really important that you are very knowledgeable about drugs so that um, you will work efficiently as pharmacist someday if you are able to pass the board exam and then na license. <laughs> okay, check. Bye. <laughs> Out today. Si, si, na, si Ma'am 